hello everyone and a very warm welcome to the channel. Now I don't normally do tech reviews but I would like to share with you my three dislikes of the Sony ZV-1. There are loads of reviews on YouTube. Most of them mention the good features of which there are many. Some mention a couple of my dislikes but I've yet to find one that mentions the dislike that, had I have known about it, I would not have purchased the ZV-1. More about that later. I've had the camera for just over six months. It was purchased along with the Crane M2 gimbal for my cooking channel, the Barbecue Walk of Flame. I wanted to get those shots of the camera gliding over my delicious food. I did lots of research and watched loads of YouTube reviews and the dealer from which I purchased actually recommended this combination. My first dislike is mentioned frequently in many reviews and I didn't think it would present too much of a problem for me. The second one, I found a way around it, thanks to YouTube. The third dislike, I found nothing mentioned in any of the reviews I watched or read. It was confirmed by one line tucked away in the very extensive instruction manual. Had I been aware of this is how the camera performed, I would not have purchased it. Simple as that. Dislike number one, the battery. It does have a claim time of just one hour before it needs recharging. I haven't timed it, but they do run down pretty darn quick. On the plus side, they are quite cheap. So I always have with me a few spare fully charged batteries. However, if the camera is mounted on a tripod or the gimbal, the mounting plate has to be removed to access the battery compartment, which in the case of the gimbal means it has to be rebalanced, using up some of that very precious battery power. There is a power outlet on the gimbal. All that's required is the correct lead. My second gripe is slow-mo. The camera has three high frame rate settings, 250, 500 and 1000 frames per second. At 1000 frames per second, the picture quality suffers. However, for me, 250 and 500 frames per second are more than adequate. The problem is, when you're shooting in the high frame rate mode, you only have two seconds recording time. One and two. For example, this shot of the waterfall was very easy. Simply line it up, press the button, and you will have more than enough footage when played back at 25 frames per second. On the other hand, this shot of the peppers falling in the bowl took five or six takes to get the action in those two seconds from when the button was pressed. There were a few takes where the action was missed completely. Thanks to YouTube, there is a way around this problem and that is to shoot in the XAVCS setting at 100 frames per second if the camera is set to PAL or 125 frames a second if set to NSTC. The action can then be slowed down in editing providing your software has the facility. This method was used to shoot the spring onions falling into a pan on my barbecue. And so to my final dislike. When the camera is controlled via Wi-Fi, as it is when it's on the gimbal, the brightness of the screen is reduced by half. Which means if you're shooting in daylight on the screen, you can hardly see a thing. With the camera on the Crane M2, I'm now powering up the gimbal. The camera is now connected via Wi-Fi. As you can see, the screen instantly goes dim and you can hardly see a thing. 
How good is that? Any outdoor gimbal work, for me, is guesswork. And I don't like guesswork. Had I have found out about this in my research, or on a YouTube review, or the dealer had demonstrated the combination, I would not have purchased the ZV-1. If anyone knows of a way around this problem, please let me know. Otherwise, I can look back 150 years at those pioneers of still photography with their mahogany and brass plate cameras and that one essential accessory, a piece of black cloth. Believe me, many, many years ago at Photography College, I used one of those cameras. And just like the ZV-1, on the screen, Without the black cloth, you could hardly see anything. That's progress for you. In conclusion, the ZV-1 does have a lot going for it. My video, the spectacular scenery of the Norwegian fjords on this channel, was shot entirely on this ZV-1. I sincerely hope you found this video useful. If you have, give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share similar experiences of the ZV-1 or know of a way round the screen brightness problem, please sub the channel. Activate and ding the bell and leave your comment in the box. Well, that's all for now. So it's goodbye from me and thanks for watching.